most wrecks that are found, uh, you don't know who was on board and you don't know actually how they found it in the first place. With the Viscount Melbourne, what makes her so interesting is the account that was written by Harry Thompson, who was a 16 year old navigator, who actually came up on watch. Um, it wasn't his watch. He came up, he asked the, the navigator who was on watch at the time, what's that sound? And he said, there's a squall coming. And he said, but it's very strange, there's no wind. And in actual fact, it wasn't a squall, it was the breakers. And Harry realized this at the time and then went into action to throw out the aft anchor to try and hold her, which it didn't. They wanted to throw out the forward anchor, but it was paid down with chain. And so they were unable to prevent her from going up onto the hard coral shoal, which was exposed. So once they were on top of the shoal, they then decided they would cut the mizzen mast off. Now this is all from Harry's account. We only know this because Harry kept a very clear account of what happened, which was later published in a book called Felix, and that's how we gleaned more information. Now, once they went up, they cut the mizzen mast down to try and lighten her up so that they, she could maybe uh, lift off the shoal, which was unsuccessful. And once they found that it was unsuccessful, they saw they were taking water. They had um, a cargo of cotton, saltpeter and rice. Now, cotton and rice, once it's wet, swells up, and they used the term it would blow up the ship. So they knew that the hull wouldn't survive once the, uh, the cargo started to take on water. So the decision was made that they would go into their life rafts, five of them, and make it to land. They knew that there was Borneo, they knew that they weren't that far from, well, 10 days roughly from Singapore. And so that decision was made. They decided to throw the stores open, drink the rum. I mean, apparently, according to Harry, the cook got drunk, the butcher got drunk. They killed the sheep and the pig that were on board. They roasted the lamb, they boiled the pigs. And once that was done, they, the provisioning was done, that's when they vacated the vessel. They didn't leave before that. And so during that time, Harry mentions that the, uh, the butcher himself was so drunk, he fell in one of the skylights and uh, had to be removed and pulled out. But for us, one of the interesting things was he mentioned as he left the boat that the once orderly deck was no longer orderly. It was strewn with all matter of fruits and bottles and gin and he names and he gives the names of what was laying on that deck. And that's how it was when we found it. When we were down there, it was just a mass of bottles strewn with a mass of bits and pieces, not only, and we assumed from that that this was the wreck of Harry Thompson's, the Viscount Melbourne.